you very much for an inspiring address. You've been kind enough to uh, take perhaps two or three questions. Thank you very much, Chair. Give me this uh, wonderful chance to ask a question to our President. President, in the eyes of the international community, some of your Philippines' behavior in recent days, recent times, it now sounds like you really consider other parties' comfort level, and there is a risk of ruining the regional long-earned, long-lasting peace since the end of the, uh, you know, colonial history. What's your comments on that? Uh, quite the contrary. I think, the, I think if you uh, uh, examine more closely the remarks that I just made, we I precisely uh, focus on ASEAN centrality and that the principles that are laid down that are involved in the, the concept of ASEAN centrality are some things that we must use to guide us. And when we talk about the South China Sea, we have to also remember that uh, the South China Sea is, is the passageway for half of the world trade. And therefore, the peace and stability of the South China Sea and the freedom of navigation of the South China Sea is a world issue. And that is what I am proposing. And I am saying that this is a, re this is, yes, it is a regional issue, but we must examine and be part of the discussion. We must include uh, all parties in the discussion because now it is not just ASEAN member states who are stakeholders. And it is, quite, uh, it is quite easy to see that it is, in fact, the entire world that have become stakeholders in the peace and stability of our region. Um, President Marcos, I'm going to ask you a very direct question, if you don't mind, which is, if Chinese Coast Guard water cannons killed a Filipino sailor, would that cross a red line? And then can you also give us a sense of what are the actions that would trigger a request from Manila to Washington to invoke the U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty? If a Filipino citizen is killed by a willful act, that, that is, I think, uh, very, very close to what we define as an act of war. And therefore, we will respond accordingly. And our treaty partners, I believe, also hold that same standard for uh, when the actions with the joint action will be uh, undertaken. Uh, in support of any kind, any such incident in the Philippines. Thank God we have not yet uh, uh, gotten to the point where any of our participants, civilian or otherwise, have been killed. But uh, once we get to that point, that is certainly, we would have crossed the Rubicon, uh, certainly crossed the Rubicon. Is that a red line? Almost certainly it's going to be a red line. So what specific um, force packages are you eyeing particularly in the next coming years? And what exactly are we to expect after Horizon 3 or the AFP modernization program? The Horizon 3 acquisition program is the acquisition program that the, uh, that the, the, the depart our Department of National Defense has just completed. Uh, then we are presently in the, in the process of finding suppliers for all the different uh, uh, requirements that we that we have to build up uh, our capabilities in the in the, uh, the armed forces of the Philippines to um, work for peace, prepare for war, and there is it is an unfortunate truth, but uh, and that is why we have uh, well, we have undertaken this uh, long term. It, it has been going on for many years now. This long term plan of uh, increasing the capabilities of our um, of our military. Uh, and uh, our civilians, such as the Coast Guard, uh, in, the, in the Philippines. You have helped us to set the agenda. You have provoked our thinking. You've spurred us to action. That is the keynote speech that we needed. That is the keynote speech that we got. You have sung for your supper. I think it's time for you to enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.